Hey guys, it's Ecuador Sintel again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really, really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with AR Foundation and Unity. In this version, I'm going to show you a new feature called the AR Participant Manager. This is going to allow you to create what's called a collaborative session. You're going to be able to create an anchor on one session and then share it with multiple peers. In this video, I'm going to also show you what you see playing behind the scenes which is two devices that I have currently an iPhone and also an iPad Pro. In these two devices, I'm creating anchors. These anchors are getting shared through the peers and you guys can see what the session ID is. You guys can see what the tracking information is. So I'm going to jump into Unity and give you more details. Thank you guys. All right, guys, so let me show you how this works. I'm going to be hitting play on each one of these. The one on the left side is my iPhone. The one on the right side is my iPad Pro. So I want to show you how you can actually collaborate with the component that we have in Unity in AR Foundation right now. So let's go ahead and hit play. So the component is called the AR Participant Manager and you can see how as I create an anchor, it's showing on, on both sides. So if I instantiate it in this one, it's going to be shared with the iPhone. So it's using the collaborative component. So you guys can see that networking is, is working just fine. You can also see that the it's actually showing you if it's receiving data, if it's sending data, if it has collaboration data, and also the bytes that get received. The information on the top side is the session ID, the session state, and whether we're tracking or not. Everything is working fine. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results. You also have the option to remove all the local reference points. But the cool thing about this is you can basically share the anchors and anything that happens within the session, which in this case, it happened to be this game object, but we can change it and swap it if we wanted to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump into Unity and show you how the project is composed. And again, this is all credit to Unity because they're the ones who created these scenes. So I'm just going to show you how it works and what some of the components are. So the components that are important are going to be in the air session origin. And just keep in mind that the example that I'm looking at is the AR collaboration data example. You can find that by going into assets, seeing AR collaboration data, and then double clicking on the AR collaboration data example, which is the one that I have open. I also have that set as the one that is building, and that's the one that I built last, which is the one on the very top. So some of the components in here that are important, some of these ones you already know because you've been looking at my tutorials, I would hope. And some of them are the AR session origin. This is, you know, the placeholders. This is the bare bones for you know, creating a, an AR application. AR point cloud manager is needed in this case because that is basically the point clouds that we were looking at when I show you the demo here. Let me go ahead and go back to that. Are gonna be all these yellow points. So those are the, what, what I call the point clouds and what Unity calls the AR point clouds. The AR raycast manager is what's going to allow you to actually place an anchor. So we're doing a raycast in AR. So we also need that component. AR Anchor Manager, this is needed because we're going to keep track of all the different anchors that we add. So in our case, if we go back into our example here, I'm going to keep this open so I don't keep closing it. If I keep going into it, and you can see each one of these is an anchor, right? So the manager is the one that is keeping track of each one of these anchors. The reason for that is because we have these remove local reference points. So the way that they implemented it is they're adding anchors. And then if you want to basically press that button, it's going to remove everything that the manager is currently tracking, which is going to be all the anchors that we have in the scene. They're also called reference points. I think they, those two names go interchangeable, so just make sure that you know that. And then anchor created, it's what's going to be adding information to the manager. So if we go and look at that script, that is going to be, whenever we do a raycast, it's going to get the post of the raycast. So for instance, if I go here and I hit this point right here, it's going to get the post, the position of that point and with the rotation and everything, and it's going to send that information over to the actual manager, the anchor manager. Anchor manager is going to say, okay, I have that heat post. I'm going to create a new anchor at that point. So if I can create a new input at that point, I'm not going to throw an error, and then I'm just going to add it to a list. So this is basically to keep track of all the different anchors, and then they provide a method for you to, so if you want to call this through a button, which in this case they're doing. So if we go here to the canvas, and we look at this button right here, which is called Clear Reference Points. And you go all the way to the very bottom, you're going to see that the on-click event, it's calling the Anchor Creator, creator, and then calling the Remove All Anchors, which is basically loops through and remove all the anchors that we added to the manager. So let's go ahead and go back to the AR Session Origin. So, so far, so good. We have the AR Point Cloud Manager, AR Recast Manager, AR Anchor Manager, which is basically the one that is going to create instantiate the anchor, 
And then we also have an anchor creator, which is keeping track of all the anchors that we have. Then the other one that is also important is going to be this AR info, anchor info manager. The reason why this is important is because it, it, it's going to tell us whether we have a local anchor or we have a remote anchor. The scene, when I was looking at it, when Unity created it, it basically comes out with, use, it's using the AR participant manager and also the AR anchor manager. And they both have a reference to the AR reference point access. So if I double click on this and we go into the scene view, you're gonna see that this is just a simple, you know, a simple 3D object. It's just showing, it, showing us the Y axis, the X axis, and also the Z axis. But if you wanted to do more debugging, so let's say that you wanna know if this is a local anchor or a remote, a remote anchor, you can go and actually add a new prefab. And that prefab is going to be this one right here which is called the reference point with the bug text. And that's exactly the same component, except that it has a canvas and it has a text box on it. So the way that Unity is handling that is they're saying, okay, you know what? I'm gonna add the anchor info manager. And whenever I add a new anchor, I'm going to find out if the session ID that I currently have, if it, if it matches the session ID that I have, I'm going to call that one a local anchor. The reason why this is true is because I know that this is my session, so I know that I was the one who created this anchor, so I'm gonna call it you know, the local anchor. If this was a remote where the session ID that I currently have doesn't match the session ID of the subsystem, then I know that this is going to be an anchor that somebody else created, a different participant created. So that's how they're handling that. If you want to use this one, which is more for debugging, you can easily just you know grab that prefab and then associate it with the with the components that I show you, which are gonna be the AR Anchor Manager and also the AR Participant Manager. So that's how this component works. Anchor Creator, like I said, it just keeps track of all the collections. This one is going to show us information about, you know, the, the actual anchor. So if it's a local anchor, if it's a remote anchor. So if we go back again, remember that this is what, you know, actually is doing that and setting the text value on the canvas in the anchor itself. So if we go back and you look at the other component, and this is basically one of the biggest features is the AR Participant Manager. So this is gonna be the one that is going to allow you to collaborate, right? You want to, you want to create a new, a new component, you want that component to show on a different screen. So you need to add the Participant Manager and make sure that the same, you know, the same prefab is associated with this one and also the AR Anchor Manager. I'm going to be showing you how we can change this if we wanna do a different component at a, at a later time. I think for now, I'm just gonna keep it like this, just to keep it simple. Now, okay, so that's great, Dilmer. So where's all the magic happening? How does the information get transferred back and forth? And, and that is basically happening through a plugin that Unity wrote, but I'm gonna show you one of the main components. If we look at the AR session, you're gonna see that there's also, in addition to the AR session, which is, you know, placeholder, there's also an AR input manager. Again, that's placeholder, that's, those are things that we normally no, normally we add when we create an AR foundation application, but these two are custom. This one is going to be the text that you see right on the very top here. And it's a little bit hard to see because that, there we go. So this one is gonna show you the session ID of the, my current session ID. Also the, the session state, whether we're tracking, whether we're not tracking. And also, well, this is gonna be the session state and then this one is gonna be the tracking state. So if we can track for whatever reason, it's too dark or, you know, we have an issue, we might not get, you know, AR, a, AR features in the phone that we have, then this, this value should be reflecting that. The session ID as well is gonna show in here. So this is really important because when we're, you know, when we're testing with multiple devices, we wanna know what those devices sessions are so that we can add accordingly. So that's what this is, it's just that information. I think that was a long explanation for something as simple as that. And then it has a, it's bound to this text. So that text is going to be this one. If we click here, you're gonna see that that is the text. If we go here into 2D, that's the text that gets displayed on the top on the top right corner, and that you guys you guys can see it right here. So let's go ahead and go back into the AR session. So the other component that we have is going to be the collaborative session. So this is one of the most important components because what what Unity is doing behind the scenes, they're actually exposing the service that ARKit is providing, and ARKit is doing something similar to HTTP to TCP, where you know you actually have a host and that host is only exposed to certain people, right? So in this case, if I were to package this app and I push that app to a device, and then I have another device that does the same thing, and they both have the same service type, 
then I'm going to be able to talk back and forth between those two devices. So that's what I did here. I created a, a package of these. I went into file. I went into bill. I created a bill. I pushed it to my iPhone. I pushed it to my iPad. They both share the same service type. They were in the same application bundle. Then when I, when I launched both, then they were able to talk to each other. So just know that this is a very, you know, a very important component. So let's go ahead and look at it. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And again, this was written by Unity. I'm going to try to explain it as, as good as I, as I can. But if you look in here, this is going to be requiring the name of the, the network service. So this is what I was saying, that this is kind of like an HTTP service, like uh, you know, a TCP service where you have to have a host. They need a name for the network service. And it says here it should have 15 characters or less. And these are just some requirements that you know, ARKit is actually you know, requesting before you can create a session. Just make sure that you follow those, you know, those standards. And you can also look at some of these documentation. And I haven't looked at these, but if we go into it, it's going to go ahead and open up. There we go. Open it up. It's going to walk you through what Unity is using behind the scenes. So they're using the MC nearby service advertiser. So this is just a service that's going to be advertised to, you know, any any of the devices that are within the same network. And they also have the service name that I just specified. So if that doesn't make sense, let me know. I a lot of this is basically you know not exposed. Well, this is actually exposed in the plugin, but we're not gonna have to touch it. All you really need to do is know that you need to add a collaborative session and you have to have the service type, and then that's basically it. If you want to get and drill in into how this works, then you can look at that documentation. You might need to extend it, but for the most part, you don't have to do any of that. So the other things that we also have here, we have a property here to expose that. We also have on enable, it's just going to check to make sure that the device that you're trying to launch the co collaborative session with supports collaboration. So in our case, we're using ARKit. Looks like the, the session requires, collaborative session requires iOS 13 or greater. So if you don't have that, it's not going to work. So just make sure you have that. And again, this doesn't work for Android because this is an ARKit only feature. I hope Android adds it later. And when they add it, I hope this is going to work for both. But for now, it's just going to work with ARKit and with that version of iOS. So other things in here, just you know, a get subsystem method that is going to allow us to get the subsystem, and a wake method that is going to create the MC session. So this is basically the plugin that Unity wrote, and that is encapsulating the information that we get from ARKit. And they're using a bridge to do that. If you want to look at that information and how that is structured, you can look at, if we go in here, and we look at the scripts, and you look at the you look at the multi peer. You're gonna be able to see that the native code is here. You also can see that the MC session is in there. So if we go back into the script, this is just basically creating a new MC session, and it's saying, okay, I'm gonna grab the device name or my current device, and I'm gonna type in the name of the service type that we specify above, which in our case is going to be this name. So once that is set, what's gonna happen is the update method is gonna kick in. Well, this is going to kick in right away, but they have two different options in here. One of them is going to be, I'm going to be checking for new collaboration data, and I'm also going to be checking for new incoming data. So I, I really didn't want to look into this too much because I didn't have to change it. But if we need to change it in future videos for whatever reason, you can change it. Just know that this is going to check for new data. And then when it gets new data, it's going to be sending it to all peers. So you can look at some of that. I'm not going to go through that right now. And then also to check for incoming data, this is how you can use that plugin that Unity is providing to you. So that's basically everything that I wanted to cover, guys. There's a lot of information in here in the canvas that it's displaying, whether you're receiving data, sending data, whether we have collaboration data, any login information is showing in here about how many bytes we're getting of data. Also session information is here. And then if we want to remove the, the actual reference points, we can remove them. And I think I'm going to keep it short today. But if you guys have any questions about this, let me know. I'm going to be making a lot more videos with this technology. And then we can start experimenting with you know, different game objects and then perhaps different use cases that might come up from your questions. Thank you, guys.